have Pythium. Yes, that's bad. Not as bad as it sounds, not the end of the world, but it's not good. Um, the other day going to work, so the light just hit something just right, caught my eye, looked down. <clears throat> and I noticed these cottony um, substances wrapping some of the blades. So, what is it? Well, that's the mycelium. So the mycelium comes in all different shapes, but um, I've got some photos in a, a quick video that I'll insert into this, but um, it, it basically is a parasite. It's a, a fungus um, in the, the genius, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genius, species, is Pythium. And there are different types of Pythium that affects different things. Um, and perennial ryegrass and turf type tall fescue uh, appear to be the um, most susceptible of all of the, the cool season turfs to the Pythium blight uh, that it looks like that I have. So one thing about Pythium is it can cause basically root rotting. The roots just die. Um, it is a very um, ugly disease. My, my lawn went from being beautiful green, lush, thick, to uh, a decent section of it um, has just been ravaged by it. So I'll put down some azoxystrobin, which is the active agreement in Scott's Disease X. Uh, the 3rd of July is part of my bulletproof strategy. I was running a little late, just been a little busy here lately, but I got it down, everything was going great. And then as I said, I came out, found some uh, spots in the, the, or the, the mycelium on the plant the other day. So I went to Lowe's, grabbed some, some more Disease X, and put some down. Now, a keynote for Pythium. Azoxystrobin uh, is probably the least effective at fighting it of, of all the, the different available um, treatments for Pythium that I, I've found through research. What I found is the most effective is uh, Methanoxum, which is the active ingredient in uh, several products, but the, the leading um, combatant is uh, Syngenta's Subdue Max. Let me warn you, it's expensive. Um, just under $200 for 32 ounces. That was the smallest amount I could buy. Um, I've actually got a link to it below. Uh, my thought process was $200 to gain control is cheaper than having to replace the entire lawn. But now that I know I have Pythium, uh, in the area, that means it's potential. I'm going to see it again, so I'd rather have it ready to go. It looks like as long as I, I store it in a cool, dry place, there's no moisture or direct heat getting into uh, the bottle. Uh, I'm looking at three, three and a half years worth of product there, so uh, it, it's a long-term investment. So, do you think you have Pythium? Um, well, it, it appears to be pretty uncommon, but what I'm noticing is um, stunted growth of the plant. Um, so I had some browning occur, but it wasn't at the tips. I actually had, uh, this was hidden in, in the uh, overall, what, what appeared to be a very thick, healthy lawn. Um, it was hidden down below. So it had not started turning the, the grass brown yet. Um, and it's a very fast spread, so keep that in mind. One thing I noticed uh, when I was looking through the lawn was the, the the roots were not as strong as they once were. I was able to just pick up uh, large sections and now I have just holes in my ground. But uh, the, the important thing here is be very, very careful what you do and where you're stepping. You can carry it with you. Uh, the moisture is, is probably uh, one reason why. It was, it's an area of my, my lawn that um, the sun is, is kept from for most of the day with the way the sun uh, rises and falls in the house. It protects it. It was near a sprinkler head that I kept there. Um, so it, the moisture has, has a lot to do with that. And, and from what I've seen, the humidity, we're above uh, 65 degrees at night, above 90 degrees during the day. It's like a perfect storm for this. So just keep that in mind that um, it affects specific grass types for the most part. There's always an exception. Uh, the conditions have to be right, the pathogen has to be there, um, and it's kind of a perfect storm for it to come together. All right, so I'm trying to dry out the area. I went out there uh, with my blower and just tried to, to move some air around, uh, blow any of the, the dew off, and try to dry out the area as much as I could, as quick as I could. So I did that. 
Uh, discovered this, I believe, on Tuesday. I started doing that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, I did it this morning before I, I actually mowed down. So let's talk about mowing real quick. This will spread, as I said, whether it's rain, irrigation, it will follow the path of, of the water as it drains and it will spread there. It will also spread from, from potentially walking in it and, and carrying it over and from your lawnmower. So what I did today, I mowed everything else around the property. I mowed my sides, I mowed the back, and I'm, I started in the front yard and mowed from the area that was not affected all the way up to where it was. The entire front yard I bagged. I didn't want to spread this any more than I could. And then I actually mowed down lower in the area that is affected by it because I was trying to open up for air, oxygen, and be able to properly apply the fungicide, uh, methanoxanin, uh, or Subdumax so that it would be able to uh, penetrate, get down onto the plant, kill off anything, but also work its way into the soil. Also, the instructions advise you to water in a half inch within 24 hours. I went ahead and did that while it was hot and warm out. Contrary to what I normally do, but I wanted to give it time for it to work its way into the soil and then also be able to dry out before hitting the, the cooler temperatures at night and holding that moisture even more so. I also worked in some Humic 12 uh, Air 8 and Dethatch products, which I absolutely love the next product line from Green County Fertilizer. I've been using them for two seasons and the biostimulants um, to me offer a lot of really good for your soil. So I went ahead and worked those in today to try to help start some of the recovery for the area, the things that weren't affected. And then here soon, after it cools off a little bit, probably six weeks or so, maybe eight, I'll have to actually start my rehab program uh, for the, the area affected. Um, I have primarily um, a very, very heavy turf type tall fescue. I've been uh, ideally looking at going to a, a fescue bluegrass mix. And this has just really solidified that desire. So I have two different types of turf to hopefully be a little bit more resistant instead of losing the entire section. So that's something I would keep in mind to you. If uh, you're susceptible to any certain type of, of disease, find, find a way to work in something else. Some special thanks. Matt Martin from uh, The Grass Factor, thank you so much for putting together your videos in years past when you've uh, dealt with Pythium. My buddy Ken from uh, Polo Fields uh, Lawn Service here in Louisville, we, uh, we met at GIE. Uh, thank you, Ken, for reaching out and, and offering some advice on how you've dealt with Pythium before. I uh, greatly appreciate it. And then, of, of course, the entire lawn care community. Um, you know, I posted a photo on Instagram, and boom, I had people um, offering condolences, but also some advice. And that's one thing I love about this community is everyone's out trying to help one another and, and learn and grow and, and do more and more. So if, if you do have... Um, an issue in the lawn, I encourage you to reach out to the lawn care community. Also, in addition to Subdue Max, Banal, Stellar, Segway are all some uh, effective ingredients, uh, active ingredients and products that will help with Pythium, but the Subdue Max definitely is uh, one of the most um, popular and most effective. Remember to always alternate the classes. For example, the Subdue Max is a class four or category four, group four, you'll hear it different ways. Uh, where propiconazole is a 3 and uh, azoxystrobin is an 11. So always moving around when you're doing any sort of a fungicide is important so you don't have one that builds up resistance. To note, propiconazole is not effective alone uh, with uh, pythium. There are some um, uh, mixtures at uh, the higher propiconazole rating of, of like the 14.3% with uh, azoxystrobin mixed together that are effective, but it, is, it says that it has a chance to build up resistance to, to fungicides and that it also is the overall least effective uh, manner where, uh, for example, the Subdue Max and the uh, Methanoxum is the uh, most effective. And I'm gonna do another uh, application in uh, about 14 days, so two weeks from today. It is uh, July 25th, so in two weeks, I plan on doing another round of uh, the Subdue Max so I can hopefully completely eradicate it from my lawn. I'm gonna monitor from there, see what needs to be done, and then wait for some cooler temperatures where I will be doing some aeration, some uh, dethatch, and then uh, overseeding um, in the areas. 
So stay tuned. I will post an, another video with an update, but I really wanted to get this out there because I found there was not that much research on Pythium. So recap, the number one thing is always go out in your yard, in the lawn, get to know it. And that doesn't mean that when the summer and things stop growing so fast and you're not out there as much because it's hot and there's no growth, that it may be even more important to be out there because you're not uh, seeing what's going on. You're not maintaining it as you were when the, the rapid growth, you know, I was mowing every three days back in the spring. I've gone to about every 10 to 14 days here in, in, in the hot of the heat of the summer. So stay out in your lawn, learn it, keep an eye on what's moving, what's not moving, look for anything, it's an anomaly. That's, that's the most important. Two, sharp blades, uh, water, um, you know, uh, infrequent and deep, but make sure when you're watering, you're, you're not doing it at night, late in the evening, uh, you're just inviting potential um, uh, problems into your lawn, and trust me, it's the last thing you wanna do. Uh, have a, a lawn program ready to go so you know what you're doing, log it, write it down, make sure you know when you put it down, how much you put down so you're tracking and you know next year what worked, what didn't work. Um, do, do your uh, uh, fungicide treatments, your insecticide treatments prior to. The best way to get rid of Pythium is to have never got it in there. And so from moving forward, I'll move up my um, applications for any potential fungus and insects uh, a little bit earlier in my program so that we don't have to face this again. And finally, um, when, when you are out in your lawn, it, remember to enjoy it. This has been a little bit stressful. Uh, my wife has been uh, very kind knowing that this has been um, uh, quite hard on me because uh, she knows how much I love my lawn. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. We'll rebuild, we'll recover. 
But if you can, you know, take care of your lawn to the point where you don't even get to this point, you're doing great.